when I was the president of the Congress of South African Students, we took a decision, and at the time, it's when she was under siege, uh, when she was um, uh, attacked by the media, some of uh, uh, comrades, and we took a decision at the time that we wanted to be our honorary president. Uh, and, and until uh, her last uh, days uh, on this earth, she remained the honorary president of the Congress of South African Students. Um, and we, at the time, embraced her. She embraced us, she guided us, she encouraged us, she motivated us to continue fighting for uh, student rights. Uh, and it was not easy uh, because uh, we were almost isolated because people were uh, uh, some of the people frowned, um, they were irritated, they were angry, and we appeared to be irrational, we appeared to be um, chaotic, um, to be disrespectful, to be ill-disciplined, uh, but we kept on uh, working with her, uh, supporting her, even when she went to some of the court cases, we went with her to support her, and she uh, reciprocated the love. Uh, I mean, I remember there was one day I had not seen her for about three months. I went to her office and uh, she says, why well, I have not been seen her, uh, not, not been talking to her. And I said, mom, I don't have a phone because at the time my phone was lost. Mm -hmm. And guess what? Immediately she said to the bodyguards, let's go, we're going to buy a phone for my son. <laughs> I was a president of COSAS. <laughs> and you know, the shop owner was surprised, that's we uh, Matikzela Mandela with lots of bodyguards and many people that he doesn't know coming to his shop. He had to close the shop. He was so happy. He bought Mama. He even gave, uh, gave Mama a, a watch at the time. That's how happy he was. And I remember the phone he bought, she bought me at the time was a Nokia 3310. Um, remember she came to one conference of ours and uh, as uh, delegates to that conference, we were uh, fighting amongst each other and uh, she said uh, to us, um, we should not fight because we can't uh, divide the nation at that level. Those were exactly her words. When I was uh, about to uh, contest uh, with Julius Malema for the Youth League presidency, uh, she said to me and Julius, uh, we, 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 we can't fight because uh, she, she knows us uh, to be a, a united team working together. So she was a unifier. She never took any side. She was a wonderful, a wonderful woman. She was very, you know, warm as a mother who would treat all of us as a mother, very accepting. She would always step in and deal with individuals at a personal level. If somebody is suffering, if somebody is crying, if somebody is distressed, she would be there to comfort us. But as a leader, she was a fearless freedom fighter who stood out against any you know, form of uh, brutality and, uh, and, and injustice. She didn't fear the police, they were armed uh, soldiers. She would stand up and face them. She faced harassment, she faced banishment, she faced, uh, you know, torture, she faced uh, humiliation, she faced everything, but she never changed. She never faltered, she never looked back. And I would say that uh, she's one of the few leaders whose departure, departure is an end of an era of leaders who, whose uh, leadership, whose caliber was actually stilled in the crucible of our struggle, where there was no, you know, uh, hope for any personal benefit, but facing risk throughout all her lives. But she stood. And for that, we have to salute her. And for that, we have to honor her and thank her, thank her family for the support. And we always make the point that the relationship between herself and President Mandela, uh, you know, was a special relationship, but she, on her own right, <clears throat> was recognized for her own bravery, for her own contribution, and how she actually, over a long time, stood out as the lone voice of those who gave hope, even with the people inside in prison, people who were out in uh, the informal settlements where there were uh, torture, where people were in prison, where people were in the camps, uh, where people were in exile. But when she spoke, she brought that hope. She actually was so defiant that made everybody felt, listen, we've got to join into this struggle.